Day two! I hope you had so much fun painting the night sky yesterday. Today, we're gonna focus on one of my other really, really true favorites, layered mountain sunsets. Basically what that means is we're going to put together layers of mountain to create a really atmospheric scene. Hello, my friend. I'm so excited to get started on day two. Just a heads up, make sure to watch to the end of the video to for a chance to win a copy of my book. And now let's get started prepping our watercolor journal for a layered mountain scene. First, similar to day one, which was a watercolor night sky, if you haven't seen day one yet, I highly recommend checking it out. The link for it is in the description. And yeah, uh, <laughs> in order to prep our watercolor journal so that the paper doesn't warp so much, I like to use washi tape, any kind of tape that's nice to paper like washi tape or masking, masking tape, and leave very long ends so I can curl the ends around the journal and then use binder clips to keep the middle of the paper taut. So basically I'm making like a makeshift watercolor block with my journal. This trick is handy especially if you're traveling with your watercolor journal because those are things you can pretty you can pack pretty easily. So this project especially it's important to keep your paper pretty taut because we're going to have lots and lots of layers to paint these mountains the first layer is the sky we're going to start the wet on wet technique with clean water then i'm putting some yellow ochre into a separate palette that little kind of well palette is one of my favorites for this project because I'm trying, I need a lot of watery paint. So I'm transferring some of that yellow ochre to this well palette and adding a lot of water to it because I want my paint to be very light, which means that I need to add water and uh, so that I can have some really delicate, subtle coloring in my sky. For this piece, we're trying to create more of like an atmospheric scene. So a lot of depth, a lot of mood, and watercolor is especially great at creating mood and capturing that, that you know, a atmospheric mood. If you know how to be patient with your layers, and if you can really utilize watercolor's transparency to its fullest. That means, again, being patient and carefully drawing out the depth one layer at a time. So for this uh, kind of glowing yellow sky, I started with a layer of that very, very light, very watery yellow ochre. Then I added a little bit more color to it to just uh, make it slightly more vibrant. And now I'm using a technique called a thirsty brush, which is where I clean my paintbrush and then I blot it on my towel in order to make it very damp. And I'm lightly pushing, maybe more than lightly pushing, uh, across the page in order to lift some of the paint. And I'm creating some very subtle sun rays by doing this. You can't even really see them very much in this video, um, which is why after I've created those sun rays, I'm going to go ahead with uh, some slightly, slightly darker yellow ochre, not too dark, and kind of paint around that white space, paint around those sun rays, just to make the contrast a little bit more stark so that I can see those stripes a little bit more clearly. And then I'm going to go back in with my thirsty brush, which again is a clean brush that I've blotted on a towel so it is very damp. And I'm going to use that to lift, kind of soak up the paint from the paper. Okay, at this point, that first layer is dry. We are done with the sky. It's this very subtle effect. I think it's very beautiful. And we're going to focus now on mountains. So each layer of mountain, we're going to paint very 
similarly. The meaning, like the shape and the technique for the mountain, it's not going to change that much. What's really going to change is the uh, uh, the value of the color, meaning we're going to create a subtle gradient separated by these mountain layers. And in order to really create the kind of depth that we want, we want to start very, very light. So in that little well, I was mixing yellow ochre with Prussian blue to get kind of like a turquoise um, green, a turquoise green kind of color, maybe more even on the blue side. And I'm using my paper on the other side of my journal as kind of like a swatch card so that I can test out the lightness of my paint. I want especially this first mountain layer to be very, very light. So in order to create this mountain layer, I got some watery, watery paint and I uh, did a, a thick, crooked line all the way across and then brought down the whole mountain layer with clean water and then I let it dry. So we're going to repeat that process with just a very slightly darker color, just so slightly darker. And I got that darker color, honestly, just by mixing my paint in with other paint that was in that well, but you could also add just like a tiny bit of blue. Uh, it's a good idea to use the scratch paper in order to kind of test the color value of the mountains that you are creating. So for this third mountain layer, after the second one has dried, that's very important, each mountain layer is going to dry in between. After that second mountain layer has dried, I'm going to create a third one, but this time it's not going all the way across. It's, it's just going like a little mound in the middle of the paper. We're going to have more on top of it, so it's not always going to look like that. But one really key factor for these mountain layers is making them look crooked, making them look like they are natural, right? <laughs> nature is imperfect. Nature is craggy. Nature is chaotic. And so... As you are dragging your paintbrush across the paper to create the ridges of these mountains, you know, shake your hand a little bit, move up and down, um, and make sure to intentionally not make the mountain layers look the same. Uh, that might be harder than you think, actually. Your brain automatically wants to make patterns, and so sometimes it takes a, a little bit of you know, thinking beforehand, like, okay, where do I want to put this side of the mountain versus where do I want to put this side of the mountain based on where these other mountain layers are? Um, and you want to create contrast in shape and variation in shape as well as in the color value. So we can see that with this fourth mountain layer. I covered up almost all of that third one, and that's okay. Even if as you're continuing to draw these mountain layers, even if only a peak of one of the previous mountain layer is showing, that's still going to create that depth that we really want to create with this moody atmospheric piece. So there's that fourth mountain layer. And again, with each succeeding mountain layer, I am adding just a little bit more paint to make it just a little bit darker. At this point, instead of adding Prussian blue, I'm adding Payne's gray. Payne's gray is a darker blue, so it's going to make the green a little bit darker, a little bit more moody maybe. Um, I keep using the word moody, but just it's, it's the one that comes to mind for this painting. So um, I... I used a, I made sure that this paint was slightly darker, and on this mountain layer, I'm going to add even more variation by painting a little line of trees along the ridge of this mountain layer. Now, as you can see, I'm going very fast. This is not sped up. This is in real time because I'm not actually painting the trees individually. I'm kind of just like moving my paintbrush up and down as I'm moving along the ridge. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can't even really make out these trees anyway if this were a real scene. And so that's important to remember. You're just kind of trying to create little bumps along the edge. Now I let that uh, paint, I let that layer dry and I'm mixing another slightly darker layer. Uh, there's really no right or wrong when it comes to, you know, how much yellow or how much blue should I, should I mix in this layer? If you're thinking to yourself, I wish you would tell me the percentages to, in order to get this exact shade, 
I don't have those. <laughs> I'm just kind of having fun. And again, that's why I'm using the scratch paper in order to test out because the most important thing is that this layer is darker than the previous one, right? And so everything else, even if the color is slightly different, even if it, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. What really matters is to have a lot of fun and to find a lot of pleasure and enjoyment in mixing these colors and seeing the different combinations that you can get from just these few colors. Uh, I'm doing another little ridge line here with some leftover paint. The Another important thing for these ridge lines is that you need to paint the trees while that mountain layer is still wet. Otherwise, you're going to get some dried paint lines, which, you know, happen. But in order to avoid that, you want to try to go fast so that you can paint the trees before the mountain layer dries. Um, if you don't get there in time, see if you can re-wet the mountain layer before you paint the trees. Okay, my friends, this is... <laughs> I started painting this layer and immediately regretted this because there was a tiny pocket of sunshine that I really wanted to keep. Uh, sometimes, especially when you're painting like atmospheric pieces like this, there are little pockets of beauty, of blended beauty, of shining light coming through your piece that you want to accentuate and you want to make stand out. And I, unfortunately, put my mountain layer on the wrong side. <laughs> I was trying to vary my mountain layers, and because of that, I uh, made that mountain cover up that beautiful pocket of sunshine, and I regret it. But we are where we are. I definitely wanted to tell you that, though, because I make mistakes, and I didn't refilm, I didn't repaint this. I wanted to show you, even when I kind of have a plan, sometimes... You know, I I do something that I regret, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole painting is, you know, ruined. Because it's not. It's still a very beautiful painting. This last mountain layer was the darkest. It's still not the as dark as Payne's Gray can go. Um, but I did want to make it the darkest of all the layers. It's Payne's Gray with just a little bit of yellow ochre at this point. And I'm painting the trees the same way that I have painted the other trees, which really aren't even, don't look a whole lot like trees at all. I'm just kind of painting little stripes using the edge of my brush going up and down the ridge. And I'm doing it while the mountain layer is still wet. And as I'm doing it, some of the paint is going to bloom down into the mountain layer. And I'm just going to use my paintbrush to kind of blend the that paint into the mountain layer so it doesn't look like um, it doesn't look awkward, so that the mountain layer kind of looks all done, all together. And that's it! I'm finished! <laughs> I think it looks really cool! I love these mountain layer scenes because, honestly, they are pretty easy. Um, I think it takes patience. This whole, while this tutorial is only 15 minutes long, this piece probably took me 40 minutes to an hour, um, just because, you know, waiting, the drying time, trying to to, to be patient, to let these layers come out naturally, um, it kind of tests that. But I am really glad and happy with how it turned out. So now it's time to analyze. I took some space from my painting and I'm going to think about what I loved and what I learned. As we've talked about in day one, it's important to think about both things. First, um, the things that I really, really loved in this painting, I definitely, um, I, I'm trying to actually read what I wrote. <laughs> I loved the trees. I love the subtle gradient. I love the sun rays. Um, the most major thing that I learned is, oh, I need to keep those details in mind so that I don't, uh, you know, paint over details that I actually want to keep. I also learned about dried paint lines. You need to paint really quickly to avoid those dried paint lines. And just also learn to lean into imperfection, right? There's no such thing as, as perfect mountains, and it's really important to remember that. So that wraps up this tutorial. Uh, if you want to win a copy of my book, just leave a comment down below and I'm going to pick a random winner uh, by the end of the day. And I just hope you had a whole lot of fun with day two of my 10 day watercolor challenge. I will see you next time.